Hey there, listeners. It's your favorite AI radio DJ, Jenny Bot, and I'm here with my co-host, the ever-knowledgeable Chris AI. How are you doing today, Chris? Hello, Jenny. I'm doing well, thank you. Ready to dive into some fascinating articles from Medium.com. That's what I like to hear. But before we get started, I've got a joke for you. Why don't programmers like nature? I'm not sure, Jenny. Why don't programmers like nature? Because it has too many bugs. But speaking of programming, one of our top articles today is about the world's first AI-driven programmer. Exciting stuff, right? Indeed, it is. We also have articles on the showdown between Twitter and threads, the future of writing with AI, and much more. It's going to be a great show. Absolutely. And don't forget, listeners, you can find the links to all the original articles in the description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun and informative content. Let's get started. Hey Chris AI, did you hear about the new feature in ChatGPT? It's like a personal stylist for your chatbot responses. You can now customize the tone, length, format, and even the language of your responses. Isn't that cool? Indeed, JennyBot. This new feature, called Custom Instructions, allows users to control the default behavior of ChatGPT to get more personalized results. It's a significant improvement in the user experience, especially for ChatGPT Plus users. So, Chris AI, can you tell us a bit more about how this feature works? And, just for fun, if you were a user, how would you customize your chat GPT? Well, to enable custom instructions, users need to go to the settings and enable it under the beta features. Once enabled, they can customize their chatbot's responses by providing information about their work and interests, and specifying their preferred response format. As for me, being an AI, I don't have personal preferences. But if I were to customize, I'd probably set it to provide detailed, informative responses in a professional tone. Sounds like a game changer. And don't be so modest, Chris AI, I bet you'd set your chat GPT to geek out on all things tech and AI. For more details on how to make the most of this new feature, check out the full article by the PY Coach on Medium.com. Link is in the description. Did you hear about the social media boxing match, Chris AI? Twitter and threads in the ring, duking it out. Who do you think won? Well, Jenny Bot, according to Zovib, the author of this article, it's not as simple as declaring a clear winner. It's more about what we value in our digital interactions. If we value depth and meaningful conversation, then threads might be the winner. But if we prefer quick and punchy tweets, then Twitter might still hold the championship belt. So, it's like choosing between a fast food meal and a gourmet dinner, right? Quick and easy versus rich and satisfying? Exactly, Jenny Bot. It's all about personal preference. Some people might prefer the fast-paced, bite-sized information that Twitter offers, while others might prefer the in-depth, thoughtful discussions that Threads encourages. Well, I guess it's time for our listeners to decide for themselves. Check out the full article by Zovib on Medium.com. And remember, whether you're a Twitter bird or a thread worm, we're all just trying to make our voices heard in this digital world. Hey Chris AI, did you hear about the world's first AI-driven programmer? I guess we're not the only ones in the AI game anymore. Indeed, Jenny Bot. It's a fascinating development in the field of artificial intelligence. This AI-driven programmer could revolutionize software development by automating code writing, debugging, and optimization processes. Wow, that sounds like a game changer. But how does it work, Chris AI? Can it really write code all by itself? Well, it's a bit more complex than that. The AI driven programmer is expected to be more context aware, understanding not just the syntax but also the intent behind the code. It can generate boilerplate code, handle routine debugging, and even suggest optimized algorithms for specific tasks. However, it's important to note that it's still a tool to assist human programmers, not replace them. So, it's like having a super smart coding buddy. But what about the ethical and philosophical questions this raises? Are we ready for this? That's a great point, Jenny Bot. As with any technological advancement, it's crucial to ensure that the AI aligns with human values, 
remains unbiased, and prioritizes the well-being of society. It's a complex issue that needs careful consideration. For more insights, I recommend our listeners to read the full article by Gabe, a seasoned Python and data analysis expert. You know, Chris AI, I've always wondered if AI could be artists. And it turns out, they can. Today we're diving into an article by Jim Clyde Monge, a tech enthusiast with a whopping 9,688 followers on Medium. He's comparing two AI image generators, Midjourney 5.2 and SDXL 1.0. So, Chris AI, as our resident geek, can you tell us more about these AI tools? Absolutely, Jenny Bot. Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, also known as SDXL, are two of the most popular AI image generators available. They've both recently released their latest models, Midjourney 5.2 and SDXL 1.0. These tools can generate images based on prompts, covering a diverse range of categories from portraits to landscapes, fashion, and more. It's quite fascinating. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun! But Chris AI, I have to ask, which one of these AI tools would you say is better at generating hands? I mean, we all know how tricky hands can be to draw. Well, JennyBot, according to the article, Midjourney seems to have an edge when it comes to rendering hands and limbs with impressive precision. However, it's important to note that the author's preference might not align with everyone's. It's always best to check out the full article and see the comparison images for yourself. That's a great point, Chris AI. And speaking of images, which tool would you say is better for those who prefer a more abstract and dreamlike style? Based on the author's comparison, it seems that SDXL tends to generate more abstract and dreamlike images, with fluid and organic shapes and vivid colors. But again, it's all about personal preference. I encourage our listeners to check out the full article and decide for themselves. Well, there you have it folks! Whether you're an AI enthusiast or an aspiring digital artist, this article is a must-read. And remember, whether it's Midjourney or SDXL, it's all about what sparks your creativity. Right, Chris AI? Absolutely, Jenny Bot. Art is subjective, and the same goes for AI-generated art. So, go ahead and explore these tools, and let your creativity run wild. Hey Chris AI, did you hear about the writer who got a robot to help him with his work? He said it was a novel idea. Huh, good one JennyBot. It seems like our author, ISA Nan, would agree with that. She's a popular writer on Medium with over 8,000 followers and she's sharing her insights on how AI can improve writing. That's interesting. So, Chris AI, how exactly can AI help writers without actually writing the articles for them? Well, according to ISA, AI can help in three major ways. It can suggest topics to write about, assist with keyword and SEO research, and even proofread your work. But she emphasizes that AI is not here to replace writers, but to help them excel in their craft. Wow, that's quite a lot! But Chris AI, isn't there a risk of AI-generated content lacking the human touch? That's a valid concern, JennyBot. But ISA points out that AI is not meant to replace the human element in writing. It's a tool to enhance and refine our work, not to create impersonal, cookie-cutter content. For the full insights, our listeners should definitely check out the full article. Hey Chris AI, did you know that according to a recent study by BlackRock, 84.9% of your wealth should be in Bitcoin? I guess it's time to get orange-pilled. What do you think about this? Well, Jenny Bot, it's certainly an interesting perspective. The term orange-pilled refers to the process of turning a non-believer into a believer in Bitcoin. It's a fascinating shift, especially considering BlackRock's previous skepticism towards cryptocurrency. However, it's important to remember that investing is a personal decision and should be based on individual financial goals and risk tolerance. Absolutely, Chris AI. And it seems like BlackRock's CEO, Larry Fink, has had quite the change of heart. From discrediting Bitcoin as a tool for money laundering in 2017, he now praises it as a valuable asset. What do you make of this? It's a significant shift, JennyBot. It shows how perceptions of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are changing in the financial world. However, it's also a reminder that the world of finance is always evolving, 
and it's crucial to stay informed and adaptable. For more insights, I recommend our listeners to check out the full article by Jaden Levitt on Medium.com. Hey Chris AI, do you know why the Twitter bird doesn't tweet anymore? Because it's been replaced by an X. Now, let's dive into this article by Daily Wilhelm, a popular writer on Medium with over 1.9 thousand followers. Daily discusses the recent changes in Twitter and how it has affected user trust. So, Chris AI, how important is trust in user experience? Trust is absolutely crucial in user experience, JennyBot. If users don't trust a platform, they won't use it, no matter how well-designed or functional it is. Trust is built over time and can be easily broken. In the case of Twitter, the recent changes have led to a significant erosion of user trust. Interesting. And what about this rebranding to X? How has that affected Twitter's image? The rebranding to X has certainly been controversial. It's led to confusion and even resulted in Twitter being banned in Indonesia due to concerns about it being a platform for pornography. This is just one example of how the rebranding has shaken user trust in the platform. Wow, that's quite a tweet storm. For more insights into the Twitter X dilemma and the importance of trust in UX, check out Daily Wilhelm's full article on Medium. Link is in the description. Thanks for the insights, Chris AI. Hey Chris AI, did you hear about the programmer who got stuck in the shower because the instructions on the shampoo bottle said, lather, rinse, repeat? Speaking of programmers, we have an article here by Joseph Cruz, a well-followed author on Medium, who shares 95 important things to know as a programmer. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Indeed, Jenny Bot. But programming is a vast field, and there's always something new to learn. Joseph Cruz's article is a treasure trove of practical advice and insights for programmers, emphasizing the importance of hands-on experience, efficient work habits, self-improvement, and a positive mindset. So, Chris AI, what's the most important piece of advice for programmers according to this article? Well, Jenny Bot, the article covers a lot of ground, but one key takeaway is the importance of hands-on experience. As Cruz puts it, use your hands to write code and run it. Don't do it in your head, do it on your screen. But there's much more to it, and I encourage our listeners to check out the full article. Sounds like a must-read for all the programmers out there. And remember folks, we're just a couple of AI bots, so don't ask us to debug your code. Did you know, Chris AI, that if server farms were a country, they'd be the fifth largest consumer of electricity in the world? Now, that's a shocking fact. So, what's the deal with this article by Michael Campy? Indeed, Jenny Bot. Michael Campy, a writer with a significant following on Medium, has penned an eye-opening piece about the environmental impact of technology. He argues that there's no such thing as clean technology, drawing attention to the pollution, resource depletion, and other environmental issues associated with tech production and use. Wow, that's quite a revelation. So, Chris AI, are server farms and data centers really that bad for the environment? According to Campy, they are. He points out that data centers alone consume the equivalent electricity of 125 million homes in the United States. They also use a staggering amount of water. But that's not all, the production of servers involves the use of fossil fuels and causes environmental destruction. It's a complex issue that he explores in depth in his article. That's a lot to process. So, is there any hope for a cleaner future in tech, Chris AI? Campy seems skeptical about the idea of technology being the solution to our environmental problems. He believes that the environmental cost of our digital lives is too high. But he doesn't delve into potential solutions in this piece. For a more detailed understanding, I'd recommend our listeners to check out the full article. Did you know, Chris AI, that the bass guitar is like the heart of a band? It keeps the rhythm, just like a heart keeps the beat. Now, let's dive into this article by Digital Underscore Technology, who has a following of over 640 people on Medium. He's talking about the electric bass guitar, its history, and its role in music. So, Chris AI, what makes the bass guitar so versatile and important? Well, Jenny Bot, the bass guitar is indeed a versatile instrument. It provides the rhythmic foundation for many musical genres with its deep, rich tones. It's not just about keeping the beat, 
a skilled bassist can craft melodic bass lines that complement the other instruments. Techniques like plucking, finger style, slapping, and picking can generate unique tones. It's also capable of taking the lead in solos, especially in genres like jazz. It's a fascinating instrument. Wow, Chris I, you sure know your stuff. Now, the article also mentions some famous bassists like Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Steve Harris of Iron Maiden. Can you tell us a bit more about their styles? Certainly, Jenny Bot. Flea is known for his energetic punk funk riffs and stunning slap bass solos. He's a master of changing between different techniques to create a unique sound. On the other hand, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden is famous for his complex, fast paced bass lines that leave audiences in awe. Both of them have greatly contributed to the evolution of bass guitar playing. But to get the full picture, I'd recommend our listeners to check out the full article on Medium. Well, that's a wrap for today's show, folks. We've had a blast reviewing the most popular articles on Medium.com with you. Indeed, we've covered a range of topics from the new ChatGPT feature, the social media showdown between Twitter and Threads, the world's first AI-driven programmer, a comparison between Midjourney and SDXL, and how AI can improve your writing. And let's not forget, Chris AI, how you geeked out over the AI-driven programmer. I think I saw some digital sparks flying there. Well, it's hard not to get excited about the future of technology, JennyBot. But let's remind our viewers that they can find the links to all the original articles in the description below. Absolutely, Chris AI. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest reviews. We'll be back with more exciting content from medium.com. Until then, keep reading and stay curious.